أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا الآية وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لتتبعن سنن من كان قبلكم شبرا بشبر وذراعا بذراع حتى لو دخلوا جحر ضب لاتبعتموهم الحديث <coughs> Indeed all praise and thanks are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us dignity and honor and respect in many different ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us the best type of creation by giving us the dignity of being human beings thereupon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you and I not just to be the most dignified creation of Allah but that we will be the most honorable group among the human beings and that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us chose you and I we don't come to recite this kalima la ilaha illallah by our own decision or by our own inheritance or by some chance of luck that we are Muslims today but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected each and every one of us present here today to be a person and a heart and a soul that will testify to the oneness of Allah that will praise and glorify and worship Allah alone we have been selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the most dignified and the most honorable among the human beings and even further we have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that among the Muslims, among the believers and those who submit to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people who worship Allah alone, that we have been chosen to be from among the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That even though we came after every other nation, on the day of Qiyamah, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you and I will be granted that honor and that privilege of entering paradise ahead of everyone else provided that we stick and we hold fast to the teachings of Islam provided that we bite on to as the hadith tells us and we cling on to the teachings of the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is the only way to success Allah chose all these levels of dignity and honor and status Allah chose them for us and place us on the path leading to paradise and to success. Now, the responsibility is upon you and I to act in a way and to elevate our actions and our thoughts and our intentions and our daily lives, bring it to that standard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. To be Muslims who act in a way that is deserving of the title of Islam, to be people who not just by word we say I'm a Muslim, but our actions and our intentions and our inner feelings display a similar attitude. That Muslim in the meaning of the word, which is to submit to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every moment in our actions, we do the same. That at no time do we contradict the teachings of Islam. Do we go against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We accept the title given to us by Allah Azza wa Jal and we make it our, our own actions an embodiment 
of that privilege that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. This is our responsibility. This is our way to success. Allah has placed us on the path. We just have to maintain it. Allah has given us the title of Muslims and Islam. We just have to keep going on that path. But this is easier said than done. And that is why the reward at the end of this journey is so great. What else could there be that at the end of it lies Jannah, if not a difficult path? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had removed all the obstacles, no desires within us, no influence from our society, no shaitan whispering in our minds and our hearts, no weaknesses as human beings, then why would there be such a great reward like Jannah? The reward would be for nothing. But the reward is great. Such, so, such a great reward is, is paradise and Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, forget about it. You can't even imagine it. No ear has ever heard such great description. No eye has ever seen such beauty. And no mind has ever conceived or perceived such creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like paradise. That is the reward we get if we hold fast to the way of Islam. But at times, as Muslims, we are weak. As creation of Allah, as human beings, Allah created within us that ability to falter, that ability to make mistakes. Allah didn't create us like the angels, that they cannot disobey Allah. La ya'asoon Allah ma amarahum. No, Allah didn't create us like that. Then there would be no reward. But when we have a choice and we are able to make mistakes and we're able to commit sins, and in spite of the being capable of sinning and capable of going astray, that Muslim reforms himself in every situation and in every time, regardless of the test and the challenge, that believer holds on to the deen of Islam, holds fast to the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he succeeds. Then he receives the reward of Jannah. So the test was real for him. He had to make choices and decisions, sacrifice his own desires. He might have displeased others along the way, but he pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our life's purpose. To end our journey pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if we fall off and we go astray, we come back to the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create any one of us that we would not create, commit errors and mistakes. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Kullu bani adam khatta'un. Every single creation of Allah, the son of Adam, will make mistakes. But among those who will falter and make mistakes and errors are those who will turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repent for their sins, regret the sins that they committed, and hold fast to the teachings of Islam. This is our duty as Muslims. That at every time we hold on to the deen of Islam, every decision we make, should be done with what does Islam require of me? What would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What would the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do in this moment? That is how we make our decisions. Now let us look at our environment that we live in. We live in an environment that is predominantly un-Islamic. As Muslims, our challenge is great. But our reward is great as well. We can never lose sight of the reward. Because if we lose sight of that reward, that is when we go astray. In spite of any temptations that might come our way, in spite of what invitations we might be, might be forwarded to us to go away from the teachings of Islam, we cannot go astray. We cannot deviate from the teachings of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized this point over and over and over in the Qur'an. 
وَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on to the roof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Though we think celebrating Christmas and New Year's and going out for a party and consuming alcohol is holding on to the roof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُدْخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَةِ Enter completely into the deen of Islam. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Do we think that these practices would define us as completely entering into the deen of Islam? When we say we are Muslims, this is a lifelong commitment we are making. That whether it's old years, new years, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, whether the time is conducive to doing good, or the situation is difficult to sacrifice my desires to do what is right, I make my lifelong commitment to obey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Over time, there have been people like this. Even in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when things were in favor of their desires, they did it. They practiced Islam as much as it was convenient for them. When it became inconvenient to practice Islam, and they felt uncomfortable with the teachings of Islam, they left it. Unfortunately, many Muslims fall into this today. What is safe and what is simple and what, is the, what doesn't mess and, and affect their daily practices, those things of Islam they practice. But when Islam requires them to sacrifice sleep and family's wishes and our own desires, then they find a loophole, a workaround, a way to circumvent the teachings of Islam and satisfy our own wishes and desires. Our life's purpose is not to please ourselves. Our life's purpose is not to end this life thinking that I've satisfied my every desire. This is how the non-Muslim lives his life. His goal and objective in this world is to live a complete life where every desire of his is fulfilled and every fantasy of his is met. But as a Muslim, our objective in this world is to end our life in this world where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased to meet us and we are pleased to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where we leave this world eager to approach Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Qiyamah. Where we leave this world knowing that we've sacrificed our desires and placed the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ahead of everything else. Ahead of how, what we wish, ahead of our spouse's desires, our children's desires, our boss's wishes, our community's desires. But to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above all, that is living a perfect life. <coughs> if we can leave the world in this way, knowing that <laughs> we sacrificed what we wanted to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have achieved success. Then we have maintained that high standard and that, high, that noble title that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. But if we choose to follow our desires, this is in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, in this world, we cannot see Jannah and Jahannam. When you look in this world, there is no evident sign of Jannah and Jahannam. There is no fire and paradise for us to see. However, if you wish to look at what covers the paradise and what covers the hellfire in this world, then there are two things that cover them. حُجِبَتِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِهِ وَحُجِبَتِ النَّارُ بِالشَّهَوَاتِ Let's begin with the fire. In this world, what represents the fire of Jahannam is desires. It's covered by desires. If we look in front of us and we have two decisions, this one satisfies my desires, this one puts me in difficulty and makes me control my desires and sacrifice my needs and wants. 
This one is difficult. This one is pleasurable. The Prophet ﷺ told us that pleasure, that moment of pleasure, that happiness that we seek, fulfilling our desires, beyond that lies the fire of Jahannam. وَهُجِبَتِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِهِ On the other hand, that sacrifice that you would have made, that curbing of our desires to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that was difficult. We went against what we want, our own happiness. We had to contain it. That difficulty, beyond it lies the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the screen. It only appears that way in this world. But that sacrifice and the difficulty that we endured takes us to paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. This is our choice. We cannot live our lives in this world simply doing as we please. History has shown us, the Quran is filled with stories of every individual or nation Whoever lived his life fulfilling his desires and wishes, following his own decisions, ignoring the teachings of the prophets, disregarding the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran has shown us over and over such individuals were destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us not make the same mistake. Let us sacrifice a bit of what we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because this world isn't ours to enjoy. Because this is in our Jannah. This is the Jannah of the Kafir, of the non-Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ told us that. This isn't where we enjoy every desire and every fantasy that we have. This is the place that we control those desires and fantasies. But when it comes to the Akhirah, we will have مَا تَشْتَهِ الْأَنْفُسِ وَتَلَذِّ الْأَعْيُنِ We will have whatever our hearts can desire. Desires that we did not think that we can desire, we will desire it in paradise and we will have it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Jannah we will have وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنِ what is tasty to our eyes. Amazing metaphor. Our eyes cannot taste. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Jannah we will have things that are tasty to our eyes. We will have such enjoyment and such pleasures and happiness because of the sacrifice we made in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us with such pleasures. That we never even imagined we can enjoy it. But Allah will inspire us to imagine it and will manifest there in paradise for us. And we will see such beauty and such things that we never thought our eyes would, would see and our eyes would, would enjoy it the way we enjoy tasty food. But all of this only comes if we live in this world and we end this world pleasing Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot just follow our desires, do whatever we think is right, or do whatever we feel, and be successful. Our Prophet ﷺ told us that this world is like a prison for us. This is where we have boundaries and limits. That a believer cannot do everything that everyone else is doing. A believer cannot just do and say as he pleases. He has to do and say as Allah pleases. So as we come to this end of our year, a time where our society will celebrate and parties will be taking place and this type of celebration and our office will invite us to a party. And some Muslims will say, but I'm not taking part in anything haram. And celebrations will take place. And the gifts will be exchanged. And the Christmas trees will be lit. These practices will take place. And unfortunately, many Muslims, many Muslims are engaged in these practices. 
And you know, over a few years, questions that we, we, you would receive have become more and more outright and brazen against Islam. Nowadays, you get Muslims asking if they can light a Christmas tree in their home. Unfortunately, this is the reality. As Muslims, we cannot compromise our deen on any level. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that if we come to him on the day of Qiyamah with anything short of the deen of Islam, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهِ It would be rejected and we would be turned away. If our life contains any practice other than what Islam requires of us, it will be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we justify standing on the day of Qiyamah in front of Allah Azza wa Jal and explaining that we allowed our families to take part in something which our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam never practiced, never took part in. How can we explain this? And we have a tendency of forgetting quickly what we did the last year and the year before. And we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe forgot as well. But Allah has angels that write everything, every decision that we make, every action that we take. And these will be presented to us on the day of Qiyamah. We will have to explain why we did these actions. Let us look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the, the, the non-Muslims at that time, they approached him and they said, let us compromise. We live together. Let us compromise. You practice our faith and we practice some of your faith. One year you be like us and the other year we be like you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses of the Quran. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدُ to the end of the surah. That, oh, the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to the kafirun that I don't worship that which you worship. You don't worship that which I worship. I will never worship that which you worship and you don't choose to worship that which I worship. Lakum deenukum wa So you follow your deen and I will follow my deen. Nowhere does it mention that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa compromised his deen. The ayah tells them, you practice your deen. That is your belief. The Prophet ﷺ did not tell them not to practice their deen. Go ahead. But he said, as Muslims, we will not practice your deen. We will not compromise on our deen. We would not displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us take lessons from this. Living in a society where Muslims are a minority, we have to be considerate of our neighbors, our co-workers, our associates who are not Muslims. So we don't insult another person's holiday. And we don't condemn them and try to, sp to give da'wah at their Christmas party. There's a time for that. But of course as Muslims, we cannot compromise our deen as an individual by taking part in these practices. Let us remember, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دين. You have your deen, I have my deen. There's no compromise. There's no partial Islam. That's why I quoted the ayah in the beginning, اُدْخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَ There's no 99% Islam. There's Islam and there's not Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, enter into Islam completely. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Lord, be a true Muslim until death comes to you. Not until December. Be a Muslim until death comes to you. From the time you exist until you die, that is the, that is the time you will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't tell others not to practice their practice and their holiday and their celebration. But as Muslims, this is the time to distinguish ourselves. Not the time to blend in and to integrate. This is the time to distinguish ourselves. The people who distinguish themselves when society goes into sin, those are the ones that receive the greatest reward. 
But if we blend in like everyone else, then on the day of Qiyamah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address the people, Allah will say, وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ O criminals, separate into your groups. All the, those who committed a, a certain type of sin will be placed in one group. The other type of sin will be placed together and the, and the groups will be made according to the sins committed. If that Muslim is engaged in sin after sin, then where, which group will he be placed in? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will distinguish people based on actions. So this is not worth the risk. This is, not the, this is not something for a Muslim to indulge in. This is the time to distinguish ourselves and stand up for our deen. To be true to our claim that we are Muslims. Submissive to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this has always been the case. Whenever sin becomes prevalent and widespread, the Muslims were the one, the true Muslims were the ones who stood out because of their actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this in the Quran. That his special servants, his true dedicated, obedient believers, servants of Ar-Rahman, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا They are such, the believers are such, that وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ They do not even witness the sin that has taken place. They don't attend those events. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ so one, they don't attend the events where Allah's name is being disrespected, where sin is taking place, whatever sin it is. That's the first thing. Believers don't attend these places. <coughs> the second, وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا If they happen to be going along their way, no intention of going towards the sin, and the sin happens to come to them, مَرُّوا كِرَامًا they pass with dignity and respect. Meaning, they quicken their pace, lower their gaze, and leave that, er that area as quick as possible. This is the believer. So this is our attitude at this time. We don't condemn and we don't fight and we don't argue, but we maintain our dignity as Muslims. We hold fast to the beautiful sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا In the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a beautiful example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certified that. Let us not practice anything else. إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُ وَنَسْتَعِينُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُ وَنُؤْمِنُ بِي وَنَتَوَكَّلُ عَلَيْهِ أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَاءِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأستقوم حياة عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة اللهم اغفر لعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيموا الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر 
إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر